As November fades, so do our best chances of catching a mature buck making a mistake. They're still killable throughout the last couple months, though, especially with the second Illinois firearm season falling at the beginning of December. After that, food will become as important to our success as ever, with the rut now behind us. On November 29th, between the two gun seasons, I head to a new set at the cabin plot, looking for a mature eight that showed up just two weeks earlier. What's up everybody, it's November 29th, it's the evening hunt. You're not gonna recognize where I'm at based on the view, but I've been here plenty of times. I'm at the cabin on the cabin plot, and I'm in a new set that I just came in and hung last week, and I talked a lot about it on episode 105 of the podcast, so if you wanna get kind of the full story, my full reasoning, you can check it out. It's about 54, 55 degrees today. It's warm for the time of year, especially considering yesterday morning when I came in here and actually hunted this for the first time, like 23 degrees. So it feels good though. There was a doe already in the plot when I got here. Um, she kind of, she didn't spook real bad. I'm not sure she knew what I was. She didn't have the wind on me. So uh, she kind of bumped off, but I know for sure that the, there's a buck that showed up, a new buck that showed up a couple weeks ago. I've just been calling him the big brow buck because he's got one great big brow tie and he's a really nice eight. I know he made it through the gun season. I had a picture of him in here on this plot on the 26th. It was at night, but I know he's around still. So hopefully he'll show up tonight. Of course, the big seven, as far as I know, he's still around. He made it through the gun season. I definitely shoot that deer. Uh, the shed buck, I was looking through trail camera photos from last year and he actually disappeared from the 10th of last year to the 28th or 29th of November. So I've got hope that that's what he's done this year. He just left a little earlier. Uh, I haven't seen him since the second, but like I said, today's the 29th, so he could be showing back up anytime. I would love for that to happen tonight, so. And if a doe shows up early enough, I might shoot her too, so. I've been itching to get something on the ground, especially since I shot that buck over here on the pond bank and we didn't find him. This is actually the fourth time I've been here, I guess, since that and the second, maybe third time since gun season, so. I'm looking forward to tonight. It's comfortable to sit. You know, it's not freezing cold. I think it's still cold enough to move, so. Maybe something come in here and give us a shot. That'll about do it. Looks like I got probably 10 minutes left. I haven't heard anything moving around in the woods. Um, I haven't seen any deer since that doe was in the plot when I first got here. But this is probably gonna do it for this week. We do have second gun weekend opening up this weekend. So maybe Nate will get on something good. I know obviously he's still got a buck tag. That six by five has been around in the daylight a lot. So hopefully he'll have something to bring you guys. Um, and we'll show you that. With his Savage 220 in hand, Nate was able to catch up with the five and a half year old buck known as the six by five on December 2nd. Unfortunately, while he was able to get some video with his phone, he left the camera arm in the truck and was not able to film the entire hunt. Stay tuned though for a close look at a 150 class Illinois giant.
Well, good morning, everybody. Um, it is Saturday, December the 2nd, uh, third day of Illinois second gun season. Um, I was trying to get some video earlier uh, of bucks here in the plot. Really not great. Um, so I have been hunting out of blinds uh, the last two days. And uh, I am deeply regret to say that I forgot the camera arm this morning. I got the tripod, nothing to do with the tripod up here in the tree. Um, so anyway, uh, very, very foolish of me to forget the camera arm. I shot the six by five uh, about 20 minutes ago. Um, he was out in the field. I had a good clearing. Um, I use my bow hangers uh, as uh, rests. Um, my uh, my screw in arm bow hangers. I use them as rests uh, for gun hunting. So I had uh, I had that thing in the tree. He stepped into a hole. I thought I knew exactly how far he was out there. Um, I put it on him. I shot. I heard it hit him. Um, he kind of got down in the front end. He actually ran closer. I think the echo is what he heard more than anything off the woods on the other side of the field. Uh, he actually ran closer and I put another one in him um, and uh, uh, that one hit him very hard. Um, I heard it smack him really hard uh, and I think he only went 20 yards after I hit him the second time there. Well, it's been uh, probably an hour and a half since I shot him. Uh, I got some help. We're going to go in here and try to find him. Uh, we'll go down here about where I shot him on the path. Um, he should be about 30 yards off that path. That's the last place I saw him. Uh, we're in the food plot here. They've been eating the food plot like crazy, uh, so it's done very well this year. We'll slip in here, see if we can find him. Got him. The six by five. Well, we got him. Um, he came in here and died right where we thought he did. Uh, this is a buck we call six by five. Uh, he was a six by five last year. Uh, six by five again this year. Um, very happy to put our hands on him. Um, he stayed right around here last year. Thought he lived right here uh, where, where we're sitting this year um, he stayed right over here on this side of the farm most of the time um, he he's never even we've never even seen him on the other side of this wheat field anyway uh, I got him this morning he was with a bunch of does um, couldn't be happier to have our hands on him um, we think he's five this year uh, he's actually got a little bit shorter tines this year than he did last year uh, much heavier much heavier this year uh, but he's got a little shorter tines this year Anyway, um, he's a great big old buck. Um, we've uh, and and I missed him. I missed him with a bow uh, 16 days ago now. So anyway, out of the stand that I killed him. So anyway, very happy to have him. Um, he's got just a couple of tips broke up a little bit from fighting, but more than anything, we think he's the top dog around here. So anyway, very happy to have him. Uh, and this will uh, this will close the story on the six by five right here. I sure wish I could have got the shot on video, um, but uh, dummy me, I forgot the camera arm this morning, so uh, I was just trying to video with my phone from the stand. Tons of action this morning, I saw tons of action. Um, so anyway, very happy with him, uh, can't wait to take him home. Well, this is probably going to do it for this week.
We do have a second gun we can open it up this weekend. So maybe Nate will get on something good. That 6x5 has been around in the daylight a lot. So hopefully he'll have something to bring you guys. Well, here he is. We got him. The 6x5. Couldn't be happier to have our hands on him. Uh, we think he's five this year. Uh, he's actually got a little bit shorter tines this year than he did last year. Uh, much heavier, much heavier this year. Uh, but he's got a little shorter tines this year. Anyway, um, he's a great big old buck. November is officially gone. As we look ahead to the late season, we will shift with the deer back to food. It's the best bet we have to see a mature buck in daylight and fill our last few tags. Though we know some cold, tough hunts lie ahead, we will not be discouraged in our fall pursuit.